Hi there, my name is Frankie Rodriguez. I'm a graduate intern at the Center of Health and Counseling Services and an alumna of Lewis University. Before we begin, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for joining me over these last several weeks to share coping skills, build mental health awareness, and most importantly, support one another during this COVID-19 pandemic. To wrap up our time together in this final episode, I would like to share with you an overall farewell message that includes protecting your mental health during quarantine. We all know that quarantining at home can play an important role in stopping the spread of infectious disease. It is definitely difficult. We all want to get back to our normal routines. However, it is vital you manage your mental health now because being quarantined for some time does have lasting impacts on our mental health. Prior research shows that past quarantines bring out symptoms of fear, sadness, anger, irritability, emotional exhaustion, depressive symptoms, the list goes on and on. Long-term effects can include substance use and alcohol dependency for up to three years after being quarantined. Let's face it, everyone is impacted by COVID-19. However, the process to adjusting to this new normal can be different for everyone. There are a variety of factors that can influence how well we adapt to this change and strategies that we can use to decrease these negative long-term effects. One of the factors is your current mental health status. So previously diagnosed depression, anxiety, other mental health disorders can impact an, an individual's ability to cope. Another factor is how you deal with stress. So if you typically experience difficulty adapting to change, navigating through these changes and challenges may allow you to experience some negative effects at a higher intensity. Your personality or your age is another factor. So differences in personality and in age influence not only how you cope, but how you connect with others during this time. So whether you're introverted or extroverted, 16 or 60, we are all human. We survive on social connections with others. As discussed in my previous videos, there are a number of ways that we can maintain relationships with others. We have been sheltering in place for some time now. However, it's important to remember to establish routines. The disruption of our previous daily routines was probably one of the most difficult adjustments. I know it was for me. If you're working from home and have children in the household, it is best to find a routine that works for you. Try to create a daily schedule, but don't get stuck in maintaining such a strict routine. Make your own rules and break up the day to avoid monotony. Be as active as possible. Periods of physical inactivity can have negative effects on your mental and physical well-being. You can maintain physical activity through exercise videos, online workouts, or even fitness apps. Resist frustration and boredom. So I know this sounds so difficult, but really a lot of distress from being quarantined comes from being frustrated and bored. So find ways to stay occupied and engaged. So whether that's through some spring cleaning, virtual online gaming with friends, tackling a project around the house, really just keeping busy because keeping busy provides such a great sense of purpose and accomplishment. Communication. So staying connected with others is so critical in eliminating feeling isolated. There are a number of ways that you can communicate with loved ones and with friends. Talking with others who are experiencing the same circumstances can create feelings of community and empowerment. Stay informed, but not overwhelmed. So this is huge. It is critical to stay up to date with information. But on the other hand, panic can easily be created by overindulging in the media. So really set some healthy limits. Remember that kids are stressed too. Children too are experiencing challenges to shelter in place. So talk to your children about COVID-19 in a way that's informative, age appropriate, and reassuring. Remember to model healthy, positive coping behaviors. Normalize and validate your children's feelings. And lastly, remember why you're doing this. When you're feeling frustrated or cooped up, it can help to reflect on why we are all in quarantine. By doing your part to prevent the spread of disease, you are protecting yourselves, your loved ones, and saving lives throughout your communities. Strategies such as quarantine, social distancing, hand washing, and other safety precautions can all play an important role in preventing the spread of coronavirus. Staying busy, keeping in contact with others by phone or social media, practicing good self-care, and maintaining a sense of structure are just a few key ways that you can manage during this quarantine time. I want to thank you all for allowing me into your day, even if it was just for a few minutes over these past several weeks. And although this is my final farewell as the semester ends, I truly do wish you all in the Lewis community continued hope and connection with one another. Stay well and take care.